is it all Eve's fault? We're looking at Genesis 3, what's called the fall of humanity day. We're in this series talking about men and women and our relationships with one another. And this is one of those chapters where a lot of blame has been put, I think, unduly on one individual. Let's talk about that today. What does this first story have to say about men and women? Uh, what was Eve's role in this whole thing? Where the heck was Adam? And what can we glean from it for today? Genesis 3, 1 through 13. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God actually say you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. But God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. But she also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. They sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loincloths, and they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. The man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, uh, The woman whom you gave to me to be with me, she gave me of the fruit, and I ate. The Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. So we've looked at this in other places, but to go specifically to the relationship between man and woman, um, there is this sense that some people have taken this to put all the blame on the woman. The woman was deceived by the serpent, and it even says here at the end, the woman admits, I was deceived. There's a, there's a few ways to go with this. One, you could actually argue that she really was deceived, and part of that is the original command given about not eating the fruit, we saw this last week, uh, was given technically before woman was created. It was given to the man, not to the woman. And, and the words in Genesis 2 specifically are, don't eat of the fruit of this one tree. Uh, she actually, for some reason, adds, you shall not eat of the fruit that is in the midst of the tree, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And a positive spin on that could be she's putting a hedge around the law so that, you know, if God says don't eat it, we should not even touch it. Uh, another part of it is, you know, the serpent seems to be able to take that a as an inroad to say, well, she doesn't fully understand what's going on there. And so he's able to manipulate that a little bit because by adding to the original law, maybe shows the, a sense that she is ripe for being deceived. Either way, the serpent goes in for the kill and says, oh, God wants you, God knows that if you eat this, you'll be like God. I think we're getting a, 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 an insight into how the deceiver operates. Uh, he is essentially, in some ways, you could argue, offering them what they already have. They were already made in God's image, and he's telling the man and woman, hey, if you do this, now you can really be made in God's image. If you eat, if you go apart from God, you can, be, you can become like God. But in a way, they were already like God. And so there's a problem there. Uh, but she looks at it. She says, ah, oh, it does look tasty. I think I'll eat it. And this is just the point that I want to make here is that she gives it some to her husband who was with her and he ate. So even if you can say, yes, the inroad was to the woman, but he was standing right there. It wasn't like she went off by herself and was deceived. He was standing right next to her. And the blame is laid on both of them equally throughout scripture. Uh, just as an example, the apostle Paul can, uh, based on the theological need of his particular argument in Romans, he adds, he puts all the blame on Adam. In Adam all die, so in Christ all, all are made alive. But in Timothy, end of chapter two, he puts the blame on Eve, but he's making a particular point there. We'll get to that passage eventually. So uh, all that to say, they're both equally culpable and in some sort of rebellion or being deceived, and uh, neither of them are going to be off the hook. 
the other aspect, what you're seeing immediately as soon as they take of the fruit, which is really a sense of saying, I'm not, I'm not trusting God for wisdom. I'm not going to continue to follow what is good in God's eyes. I'm going to follow what is good in my eyes. They're, they're given this test, this crossroads, and they choose to do what's good in their own eyes. And then they hide from the Lord. They're afraid of him. And when God starts to confront them, he starts with the man, then he goes to the woman, then he goes to the serpent. In the next scene, we're going to see him reverse that. And he curses the serpent, then he talks to the woman, then he talks to the man. Um, but let me look at this one last part here. When he goes to, uh, you're starting to see how much corruption has already entered into creation. He talks to the man, what have you done? Did you eat the tree that I commanded you to eat? And the man... Uh, systematically blames every other person in creation at that point. Uh, he blames the woman whom God gave. The woman you gave to me, right? The man immediately tries to shirk duty and say, hey, it's not my fault. You did it, God, in the woman who you gave to me. So then God turns to the woman and they keep playing the blame game. Woman, what did you do? And she says, well, actually it was the serpent. And so they're, they're trying to relinquish all the blame and we'll see how that plays out later. But it's just interesting and sad reality that the moment that they're turning their back on God all of this deception and betrayal is already seeping in to creation